So what I wanted to take a look at, lastly, is the reporting. So we can take a quick look and see what sort of reports you can get out of the Qualitivity application. Now that you've finished doing your post editing, your quality checks, your integration with Taos, all that kind of stuff. What does all of that give you? So to start off with, when we look in the views, we immediately have under the activity records, an instant report. And we've seen this a few times um, as we've been looking at the, uh, different re as the different parts of the application. The nice thing about the project activity report is that it's dynamic. So as I select things, if you watch the rates down in the bottom here, if I hold the control key down and I start moving, it's consolidating everything within that language into one single report, which is quite nice. As an overview, just telling you what it was you've got. And then as you go down a bit further, it consolidates and just adds each of the different files that were separate at the top there into this one report. So you can open them up and get a little bit more detail on this. This is a fairly high level activity report. So you can see at a glance what you've been doing and learn a little bit more than you can out of the top view. It's a developing report this, and I'm pretty sure um, Patrick, the developer, has got plans to enhance this and make this even more capable than it already is. But let's take a look at some of the other things. So I'll move over to the activity documents. Now this one, under the document records, I need to move the window up a little bit because um, there's quite a lot of information in here that we want to see. So let's just take a quick look at this. Okay, and if I move this up as well, split it. So it splits this up into two. So what you can see here in the bottom panel is the keystroke data for the active segment. So the changes that were made in this segment at the top here, segment ID number two, if you look in the target comparison column, the changes that were made in order to achieve that, you can see step by step, keystroke by keystroke, as you work your way down here. The information that appears in these reports, you can adapt by checking or otherwise um, items within the column properties. So you can add quality metrics, target comments, modifications distance, elapsed time. There's all kinds of things that you can actually add into this report if you want to. Now, the way this works is it shows you segment by segment. So as I move down, you can see I'm getting information, including, for example, if the, if the target translation is entered by um, a translation memory match or a machine translation match, that's recorded as well. So you can see exactly which system it came from. So here this came from my um, German to English Australian TM through the NETM app. So it wasn't even directly through the, through, through the TM, which is pretty nice. And, um, and this will vary depending on which documents you've actually got selected. So I need to just go back into here again. And let's take a look at the multifarious quality document and take a look at some of the things there. So you remember when I was doing this, this post editing, I actually selected Google Translate so you can see. So you can see in the report here, it's telling me that it's come from um, Google Translate for the, for the machine translation, which is nice to know. If I move that back up again like this, as I move down, you can see the second one, SDL Language Cloud MT. So the reports very nicely are able to identify which machine translation engine is there. And you can use this information in different types of reports. Now at the moment, what you're looking at are here, these are looking at here, these are built-in reports into the application, which reflect just some of the capabilities and some of the functionalities that are available. And it's pretty interesting to look at, but you really need to be able to get at it yourself in order to do something more with it. Um, and so we will look at that in a second. So that's the document records. So for each file, it's recording keystroke by keystroke. Let's see, if, actually see if we can find one which has got a bit more meat to it. In fact, maybe what we'll do is we'll try something else. Perhaps if I just merge all of those together, so we get one report. Let's see what this looks like for the entire project. Whoa. Okay, let me come back up again. Let's come back up to 
here. So now I've got one report, and what you can see now is I have my entire project that I translated, or rather that I post-edited in the second video. And segment by segment, it's shown me everything that's happened. Now, some of the interesting things to look out for here, if I scroll down a bit further, is pay attention to the segment ID. So it's going 8, 9, 10, 11, 10. So what it's doing as well is it gives you the ability to see the movement of the, of the translator or the post editor through the document. And you can see what they were doing, what changes they had to make, why they went up, why they went down. And you can probably do some interesting things with this information, graphed in particular ways to see how different people work. Um, so this is quite interesting. Let's go down a bit further. What else does it tell us? Uh, here's an interesting one. So you can see that the um, translations come directly from the translation memory again in that particular segment. That's probably why there's only one entry in there. Same with that one. Here there's been a lot of um, additions. Things like this where the selection is we obey, of course, their duties main. This is probably where um, a whole section of text has been copied and pasted out of somewhere rather than um, entering it keystroke by keystroke. So probably select to something and then pasted that directly in. Or it might have come from auto suggest or something like that. Quite a big segment that with a lot of work. In fact, there's been two copy of and paste in there. You can see that that's most likely what that was. Probably took it off a concordance search or something like that. So you can sort of make a guess at what's happening with that information, but it's a lot, a lot of interesting information. Now if we click on the document reports, nothing in this one because there's no QA on those particular documents. If we go back to document overview, we didn't look at that yet, but this is pretty interesting because in here, we've got the entire project all marked up. And this is showing you at a glance what the changes were that were made. So the date time they were made, where they're yellow like this, this is showing you the movement in and out of the segments. So I've gone into the segment at 10.07, finished the work, gone out of it, come back in again at 11.36, and then come in, in the third time at 12.37. So there's a lot of granularity here that you can, uh, that, that you can, that you can look at. In addition to a general um, post-edit analysis or post-edit modification analysis and confirmation statistics reports, things like that. But as I said, these are all built in. So what else can we do with this? Well, I'll keep jumping away from this report before I'm finished with it. The other thing I wanted to show you here was that um, on this page, in addition to the quality assessment reports, we have um, average time per segment. I was a long time in that one. I must have forgotten to turn it off. Um, the number of words per minute and the quality metrics, okay. So there's a few standard reports there. These are really just, um, I think pretty much examples of the sort of thing that's possible because we weren't really clear at the time what could be done with it. So what we looked at instead was some other useful facilities that you have within this application. And they are things like, you can export the activities. So when you click on the export the activities, this allows you to export to Excel format or to XML format. So you would pick the location where the file was to go. Um, so let's put it in the reports folder. And I'm gonna say um, example report, save it, include the keystroke data and say, okay. And that should open up Excel because I've got that box ticked to show the report after the file has been created. So here we come with Excel. So there's only one file in there, as you know, because I merged them together. And you can see there it's saying it's made up of six documents. So you can actually see the number of documents. So it's telling you this information too. When you look at the document activities, here it's giving you all the information you'd ever need in order to do your own analysis. So you have the project name, the activity ID, the activity name, the document name, paragraph ID, segment ID, source language, target language. A lot of information in this report to help you generate your own reports and your own graphs to further drill down into the information that's being recorded. And this works also for the quality metrics. Um, and I've got some there as well, which have come out of that merge report. And I've got the keystroke data. 
So here's the keystroke data for the entire project. Everything that I pressed and everything that I did and where the information came from across the whole report. Now what I actually did is, because I haven't got time to generate a report just there, but you can use Excel and pivot tables in Excel to get quite a lot of nice reports pretty quickly. So what I did was, I've got, if I come down here, I had a little play with one of the reports and I added two extra tabs in there. So this is, the uh, this is just the same as we've just been looking at. And I added these two tabs, charts with document activities information and charts with project activities. I only did these two, but this is just to give you an idea of the sort of things that you can do. So at a top level, and this is just done with a pivot table straight out of the exported data. No manipulating of it any, in any way whatsoever. It's just taking it straight out. So it's just a couple of simple graphs. Look at the number of times the files have been opened and closed in order to finish them. So maybe they're very big documents. Maybe the translator's being interrupted a lot. I don't know. It was just an interesting way to look at the information that was presented in that particular tab. And then I looked at the number of files per client. So you could see how many clients were giving you. There's a lot of things you could do with that. Maybe you've got some other ideas of what you could do with that information. But I just wanted to show you that. And this one, this is a little bit more interesting. Um, there's a lot more information saved in the project activities tab. So there I could look at a report on the type of editing that was carried out by target language. So I can see um, the different target languages and whether it was interactive translation, whether it was machine translation coming from a translation memory or by language, it's quite interesting. I can look at where the target translation comes from across the projects. So here I can see that most of that work that I did in that project was interactive translation where I was correcting things. Um, some of it came from the uh, direct copy of the source, some of it came from a translation memory, and some of it was all machine translation. Also quite interesting. There's a nice little idea there that you can try and um, run a graph to try and determine whether or not, in general, you're improving over time so that the amount of words you're able to tackle as you get better and better at post editing is going up or going down or just staying the same. And you could look at that with different translation or with different um, machine translation engines to see whether or not the quality of the MT was, 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 was affecting your ability to get faster and faster and faster. So I'll, with that little document there, I have a little a general trend going up, but um, it's just an idea. You can look at the average time spent by segment length pretty easy. You can just get a graph straight out on that one. You can look and see where the original translation was coming from. So you can see Google Translate, SDL Language Cloud, whether it's auto-propagated. This one's come from a translation memory. This one's come from a translation memory. So these are the two different, um, oh, this is the information based on the report that I ran when I started pulling this out. So there's a number of things that you can do there. That's just to give you a general idea of what you can do with the Excel report. Now, another useful bit of information you can get is you can create um, an activities report. This is different to the export activities. What this does is this takes you through a little wizard. It's very nice, this. And this allows you to collect, collect all the information from your projects that you've been working on when you're collaborating with your, with your, um, with your customer and sharing the information that you're doing because you're working together to try to improve um, the way you work with the, with, with the tools and with the machine translation engines, perhaps. You click on Next, and you can select the type of reports that you'd like to be exported out and put in a zip somewhere. Um, and it, all, of, all of my reports are going into this output folder and it's been compressed, being compressed into a zip. But I'll just take everything out of there so we can look and see what's in there. I click on Next. That runs off and does the, um, the processing. Opens up the folder for me as well. And um, I imagine it's this one here, the last one. So if I double click that, you can see what's in there. And if I double click the files, whoops, you can't see that. It's on my other page. What that's done is it's given me an HTML file of all the reports that you could see, including all of the, um, <laughs> including all the comments from the, the QA as well. Quality metrics, very nice. And this, this can be provided as like a handoff report to, to, to your customer or to anyone you like containing all of this information. Really, really very nice. I like that a lot. Um, what else have we got in there? The quality activity. Oh, these are all going to open up on my other page. I'm sorry about that. Um, so this is a simple one. This is the same as the report that you could see in Studio before. But again, it opens up um, and it's pretty dynamic and very nice little report. 
it's like a summary overview of what, what we have. Then we have quality metrics. That's also going to open up on another page. So there you get the quality report that they can open up and it gives you the same report as before. Um, and then you get the Excel worksheet and the XML document. So you get a full stack of information that you can give to your customer and they can do all kinds of analysis on it. So that's really, really very nice. I like that a lot. So a great way of getting the information out. That's the create activities report based on whichever project you have set up. Um, now, the only other thing we didn't look at is to look at the Taos report. So this is the project that we actually did when we were doing the post editing. And if I click on the view DQF project reports, only the project manager can see these reports. So it's not available to the translator um, because they don't have the right account, I don't think. So if I drag that over. This is what I get. Um, and when I scroll down here, this is for that particular report. Does it tell me anywhere? Oh, multi multifarious hyphen qualitivity. So it gives me the name of the report. It gives me my average productivity. If you're working with multiple translators and, and you're all working on the same project, then you end up with some very nice graphs really, which, which can compare language pairs, can, can compare translators, all kinds of things, can compare machine translation engines. It's quite nice, in addition to being able to use it to compare it with industry standards. So there's a lot which Taos are going, a lot of value which Taos are going to be able to give you um, if you're working with this dashboard, I think. So you can look at the productivity per editor, the average time spent by segment length. I mean, most of the things that you see here, in fact, I'd say all of the things you can see here, you could create using the Excel spreadsheet. But as I said, the advantages you have of using this are that it's all appearing in one place automatically at the same time, um, and you can use it to compare against um, industry standards. So that's the task report. And that's it. That concludes my videos on the qualitivity application, which I hope you found useful and will give you some idea of what this application is all about and how to use it.